Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to deploy a sample application on an EKS cluster that has managed EC2 node groups. So this is what we are going to build today. I'll walk through the components as we build them in the AWS console. We are going to get the image for deployment from AWS public ECR container registry. And we'll be using kubectl a command line interface tool for Kubernetes to help us with the deployment. Let's get started. Okay, so we are in the AWS console. We are going to start by creating the underlying infrastructure, that is the VPC and the associated components. So I'm going to create two public subnets and two private subnets for our use case today. And so I'm going to select two availability zones so that the subnets are put in different availability zones. And then one NAT gateway because we need internet access from our private subnet as well. So this is the uh, infrastructure going to look like a VPC with two private and two public subnets. And then the route tables which are associated with the NAT gateway and internet gateway. All right, so let's go ahead and create it. So this will all get provisioned within minutes. Uh, the only then thing which takes more time is the NAT gateway. So while the NAT gateway is being created, let's go ahead and provision two roles. So these roles are required for a cluster. So one is going to be EKS role. And this is for EKS cluster. And this will have a default permission attached to it. That is the EKS policy and give it a name and create the role. And in, in addition to that default permission, we are going to add another permission. Go to attach policy. And this is a managed policy. So uh, search for EKS and you will find an EKS VPC resource controller. You have to add that as well because we are provisioning the EKS uh, cluster within a VPC. All right, so that is one role done. We are going to create another role. This time it's going to be EC2. This is for the node groups. So this needs three uh, policies attached. If you search for EKS again, select the EKS worker node policy that's required for a node group. And then the EKS CNI policy that is again required for uh, the instance because it's uh, provisioned within a VPC. And then finally, we need the container registry role. This is to enable our instance to pull the image from ECR container uh, registry. So we need read-only access. So let's select that as well. And give it a name. So uh, these are the three policies attached to it. And let's create this role as well. OK, so let's go back and see whether we have all everything provisioned. Yes, so let's see if the VPC is ready. OK, so it's in available state. Now let's go ahead and create our EKS cluster. So select EKS service. And under that, create cluster. So you have to give a cluster name. This has to be unique within your uh, region. And then you can choose from a variety of Kubernetes versions. It's always best to go with the latest one. So I'm going to leave it there. And select the role that we just created, which is the EKS cluster role. And then next. So here we have an option to select all the networking that we want. So we are going to select the VPC that we just created. And then I'm going to put this in the private subnet. I'm going to unselect the public subnet once. And the public subnet will be used in our next session where we are going to create a load balancer. So for our worker nodes, let's just stick with the private subnets. And I'm going to select the default security group, which comes with the VPC. And then within the cluster endpoint access, I'm going to choose both public and private. So with this, your worker node uh, endpoints will remain within your VPC. 
whereas your cluster endpoint can be accessed from your uh, outside the VPC. So this is the ideal one. So I'm going to choose public and private. Next, if you prefer to enable logging, you can do it here. I'm going to leave it disabled for now because this is just demo. Then add-ons, these are added by default. So I'm going to just leave it there and click next. And within the add-ons, you have options to change the versions. Again, it's best to leave it with the latest versions. So I'm not going to change anything there. And review everything and create the cluster. So this cluster creation takes somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video for a while and come back. All right, so we have our cluster provisioned. It's an active state. Now the next step would be to create the node group. Before that, let's see the resources which comes with the cluster by default. So you will have uh, two core pods by default. And to deploy our own application, we will need to provision either a node group or a Fargate profile. So I'm going to go with node group in this session. So you have to give the node group a name and then select the IAM role which we created. That was EKS node role. And you can either use launch template for your EC2 instances or you can configure the settings here right away in the node group itself. So I'm going to do that. So you have to select an AMI type and then the capacity I'm going to go with on demand and then you have to select a instance type as well. So I'm going to go with T2 medium for our use case. And you can change the disk size. And here internally your cluster will provision an auto scaling group. Uh, so I'm going to go with one as a desired capacity uh, because this is just a demo instance, but in your production environment, you can set it as per your requirement. And then here uh, for the subnets, I'm going to again choose just the private subnets. And if you want to enable SSH access for your uh, instances, you can do it here. All right, so let's review all these settings and create the node group. Again, this node group creation will take somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back. Okay, so we have our node group active. And if you see within nodes, you will see a one instance provisioned. Right, because our desired capacity was one, so we just have one instance provisioned. So, and as you can see, there is two more pods added as well. Okay, we are done with creating the EKS cluster. Now we are going to actually deploy the application into our cluster. So for that, I am in the command prompt or the terminal where I'm configuring the access key and secret key details to access EKS cluster. And once you're done with that, we are going to run this command to update the local cube config file with our EKS cluster config. So this is a simple command, AWS EKS update cube config, and then the region where your cluster is present, and then the cluster name. So this has updated our local uh, config file. And now we can go ahead and run all our kubectl commands. So the first command which I'm going to run is kubectl apply s, and then the file name. So this is deployment.yaml, which has uh, the namespace deployment and the service uh, defined. So this file is present in the GitHub repository. I'll leave a link of that in the description below. So as you can see, it creates the stuff pretty quickly. Uh, and to see what are the resources that are created, you can just run a command called kubectl get all and then n the namespace. 
So in our case, the namespace is uh, game2048. So once you run this command, you will see all the resources that are being created. So there are two pods because I had set the replica set to two, and then a service, and then the deployment itself, then one replica set. So the service just has the cluster IP and it is exposed in port 80. So since this is in private subnet, it can't be accessed directly. We have to load balance it through uh, ingress and then access it using a cluster endpoint uh, that is a load balancer DNS. So that we'll see that in the next session. So before that, let's go ahead and take a look at the code itself. Here is the deployment at YAML. So there are three resources defined here as we discussed. So there is a namespace and then the deployment. So this is the main part where uh, we specify the image, the EK ECS repository from where we are fetching the image. So this is where you will change and specify your own image. And then finally, the service. Uh, so the service is exposing the application in port 80. Right. It's best to use the namespace because we can identify all the resources of our application by using the namespace. Right, so we can see the resources from AWS console as well. So let's, let's quickly get into the AWS console and take a look at the resources from there. So if you get, go into the cluster, uh, you will see a resources tab. Uh, uh, under pod section, you will see the two new pods being created here. And then under replica set, you will find one replica set. And then under deployments, you will see one deployment. So we have actually tried and deployed the 2048 game. Uh, the image is available in the uh, public repository, AWS uh, public ACR repository. So that's what I have used here. So hope that this was useful. In the next session, we'll definitely create a load balancer and see this working and access it from a browser. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.